Uh, so with that, um, I am going to bring up the U.S. Ambassador to Finland, Mr. Robert Pence, for some remarks. Thank you, Andrea, and, and the ladies and gentlemen of the uh, Armed Forces of this beautiful Republic of Finland. And yes, I do love saying Republic of Finland because this is a republic. Can everybody hear me back there? Um, the United States Ambassador gets to do a lot of fun things, gets to do a lot of serious things, uh, things that um, the ordinary citizen bear never gets to do. <laughs> and many of which, thankfully, um, most people are not aware of. The, among the things the ambassador gets to do is to have very special moments like this this morning. Um, I look around the room, I know some of you because I was here about a week ago. And uh, I'm going to spare the press and, uh, and uh, most of the audience a repetition of my main points. Having said that, I will say I don't have to speak again about uh, the fact that I'm pleased to be here um, representing today, or presenting today, being with um, Boeing, which is one of the two American uh, candidates for Finland's new um, fighter wing. I don't have to express again the gratitude that the United States of America has for Finland, for the seriousness with which you take your national security. And I'll depart again already from my prepared notes to say uh, two things about the Finnish government. One, I would say three times in the last two months I've been with your uh, President Sali Ninistu when he has addressed uh, a recent survey that indicates, I have no doubt it's true, that the high 60 percent, 67, 68 percent of the respondents, Finnish respondents, uh, indi have indicated their willingness to fight for their country. In the next sentence, he always says, and at the other end of the um, survey, 18 or 19 percent of um, the Germany, he says Germany, so I'll say Germany today. Um, 18 or 9 percent, 18 or 19 percent of the Germans are willing to fight for their country. And mm, so that's President Nienistu. Yesterday I had the opportunity to speak with um, your foreign minister, Havisto, about a number of issues. Uh, he will be in Washington a week from Friday to meet with uh, the Secretary of State to cover any number of things. Um, Yesterday we spoke very briefly because it would be inappropriate for me to be discussing fighter acquisitions with him. So we passed over, not in silence, but very quickly, the question of fighters, fighter planes. And we talked about any number of issues that affect our two great countries. <coughs> the, um, and um, I likewise don't have to say that you have two excellent choices before you. Uh, well, you have five, but <laughs> it's like um, two of the excellent ones are more excellent. I feel like Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, you know, most excellent. Uh, now I'm really going too far. I so. um, was trying to be brief about my remarks. Um, the the um, uh, Boeing, I, c I can say this easily about Boeing. Um, I've, I live in Washington, D.C. Uh, I didn't all my life until I moved here last May, uh, May of 18. And uh, I know the Boeing organization very well in many, in many aspects, in, including uh, their roles across America as, as uh, corporate citizens, particularly at the Kennedy Center and other, and, and other places. But I also can speak, to, address one other thing this morning that I guessing most of you um, will unfortunately never have uh, an opportunity to, to do, and that is I've had uh, uh, two multi-day visits um, <coughs> into the Pacific onto American nuclear aircraft carriers. First time the Abraham Lincoln, the second time the Carl Vinson. Uh, a total of about six days, 
And so I got to do something that American civilians and a lot of American military don't get to do. And that is actually be uh, upstairs in the tower and on the flight deck when um, these hornets are being shot, shot off and, uh, and recovered <coughs> day and night and night and day with men and women piloting these uh, fantas fantastic planes. They are, they are planes that uh, uh, we Americans have uh, entrusted to our military, provided to our military to provide for our safety, and they work. That's not a commercial. That's just a fact of life. And uh, you have your own experiences, so my comments are I'm not intended to be redundant. Um, but to say you have two candidates before you that the American government and people have have um, have produced and are producing the very best two that we can produce to protect our shores and the people who live in our in, in our country. That's a serious charge. That's a, a serious effort. Um, two quick things about planes, and then I'll close with one remark. I mentioned last time I was here, and I'll go back to my notes about our long history going back more than 80 years to 19, April of 1939, when Finland requested and the United States provided um, a fleet of um, 44 Buffalo Brewster fighter planes. I said the last time I was here that uh, part of the net result of that exchange was more than um, uh, 30 uh, Finnish aces. I think actually I knew them, but I didn't want to dwell on it too much. I think there were actually 36, and uh, an aces, you know, is five or more uh, planes shot down. So it was a, a staggering number. Um, I asked my team today, I said, you got to give me something else about an American fighter plane in Finland, because I have to have something new every time, get paid for it novelty, especially when my people provide the novelty, <laughs> uh, and that is um, the Curtis P-40, uh, which for those of you who don't know, in, uh, in its full uh, color, um, a flying tiger, which gained uh, international renown right before I was born in the 40s in World War II. And then, um, anybody know why I'm going to mention, besides the military here, anybody know why I'm going to mention a Curtis P-40? Um, going once, going twice, going three times. Uh, in 1943, um, a, um, a Curtis P-40, um, um, which had been provided to Russia, landed on a lake. And uh, the Finns um, duly uh, took possession of it tore it down, built it back up, learned a lot of things about the aircraft design and, and engineering. So I like that little tidbit. It did not see action during the war, but it lasted, uh, existed for many, many years. I wish we had another one or that there were one in the museum. Um, but, um, and I'll close if I may have one more minute. I'll take it even if I can't. <laughs> because I said it the first time when I met President Ninishtu on in um, May of, of 18, and I've said it in a number of other places, and I've, I've, I've mentioned um, the long-standing cooperation between our two nations. And in fact, um, when I went before the Senate, I'd done some research, and I'd, I'd found, um, because I looked for it, that there were one, two, three, four, five uh, men who had uh, come to the United States from Finland, aka Russia at the time of a couple of them, uh, that they were born and enlisted in the armed forces of the United States and who subsequently received the Medal of Honor. And um, many more joined the military, but five received the Medal of Honor, three for the Spanish-American War, uh, one for the Boxer Rebellion in China, and one for service during World War I. None of them died in action, 
but if we were all outside, you all don't have to turn around, <laughs> and we were looking at one of the most hollowed places uh, in America, the tomb of the unknown soldier in Arlington National Cemetery. If we looked at the tomb and then we looked down the hill and to the left, we, we would see a marker. And the marker is for John Eaglet, who was one of the five Finns who received the Medal of Honor um, for service to America. Uh, he for the Spanish-American War. Um, he died subsequently in an action at sea, not in a wartime action, but in, in fact in 1914. Uh, but what I have not said whenever I brought them up before, and I uh, apologize for multiple omissions to do this, but I, I know with press here today, I'm not going to fail to do it today. The five, John Eaglet, Johannes Anderson, Nicholas Erickson, Axel Sunquist, and Axel Westermark. Um, they are the five who have, who received the Medal of Honor, which is our nation's uh, highest military award. So uh, to all of you Finns, thank you for sending such people to my country, country of my birth. And um, I look forward, I've got a little bit of time left here, um, in, in Finland to continued cooperation. Um, today, tomorrow, next Friday in Washington with the, your foreign minister and the hereafter. So uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for years of friendship with the United States of America. And um, my wife and I are extremely happy to be here. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador.